Welcome to How to Play by Cat House Gaming, where our goal is to explain the key game mechanics needed to get you and your table mates playing. We know you'd rather be gaming, so let's get started. Hey guys, today's game is Sagrada. In Sagrada, you are a stained glass artist set on creating the most beautiful window possible. This is a gorgeous game that uses colorful dice to represent the different facets of the stained glass piece. The game ends after 10 rounds. After the 10th and final round, players score points based on the three public objectives as well as their private objective. They also gain victory points for unspent favor tokens and lose victory points for missing glass panes within their window. Whoever has the highest score wins. Place the round track in the center of the table. Shuffle all of the tool cards and deal three face up near the round track. Shuffle all of the public objective cards and deal three face up near the round track. Each player selects their favorite window frame. Shuffle all of the double-sided window pattern cards and deal two to each player. Each player examines the four different patterns and decides which one to use. Pay close attention to the favorite token icon on the bottom right of the card. This indicates how challenging the pattern is, with three being the easiest and six being the hardest. Each player should take the number of favorite tokens indicated on the chosen pattern before sliding their card into the frame. Shuffle all of the private objective cards and deal one to each player. Return all remaining tool and objective cards to the box as they will not be used in this game. Place all of the dice into the dice bag and hand it to the randomly determined start player. From the dice bag, the start player randomly takes out two dice per player plus one extra, so nine dice in a four player game. Once selected, the start player rolls the dice. These are the color and pip options available for the round. The start player selects the die of their choice and places it into their window frame. The player to their left then selects a die. This continues until all players have chosen one die. Once everyone has selected a single die, selection then snakes back to the start player. The last player to pick a die selects a second one from the available options, and then the person to their right selects one. The start player will always have at least two dice to choose from for their second selection. Notice that I said at least two dice. That's because each player has more options when it's their turn. They can do the obvious action of selecting and placing a die into their window frame, but they can also choose not to take a die at all. This tends to happen later in the game when the available dice cannot legally be placed into that player's window. More on that in a moment. Additionally, at any point during their turn, the active player may choose to use one of the tool cards by paying a single favor token if they are the first person to use that card. Two favor tokens are required if someone else has already used it. Once everyone has been the active player twice, a single unchosen die is placed on the round track to mark the end of the round and the dice bag is passed clockwise to the next start player. The first die played onto the window must be played along the outer perimeter. All subsequent dice must be placed diagonally or orthogonally to a previously placed die. Each die placed must be both a different color and a different pip value to its orthogonal neighbors. This means that two purple dice cannot be placed side by side on the same row, but they can be diagonal to each other. The same holds true for two dice with the same pip value. Last but not least, dice must be placed so that they satisfy the window pane requirements. If there's a yellow square visible, then a yellow die must be placed within that space. If there's an icon of four pips, then a die of four pips must be placed in that location. Public objective cards are the primary way of scoring points. Players should attempt to satisfy as many of the objectives as they reasonably can in order to score the most points. There are two primary ways the cards will score points, color or shade variety. Don't be fooled into thinking that shade is another form of color. Sagrada counts pip values as shade. One and two pips are light, three and four are medium, and five and six are deep. The cards are well written and clearly describe the goals. Most of them are focused on not having duplicate color or pip values in the rows or columns, or collecting a specific pair of pip values. The color diagonals card is a little bit different in that players score points based on each pair of diagonally adjacent dice. With the exception of color diagonals, each card scores two to six points per instance of the objective, and players can score the same objective multiple times. If the objective is row color variety and a player's window meets this objective in three of their rows, they'll score 18 points at game end. The private objective cards encourage players to collect dice of a particular color. 
there is one objective for each of the five colors of dice in the game. During scoring, players count up the number of pips on all of the dice they have in their window of that particular color and score that many points. This means that if my private objective card is shades of blue and I have six blue dice in my window with a total pip value of 22, I'll score 22 points a game end. The tool cards allow players to expand their options by compensating for unfavorable dice rolls. Each card does a great job of explaining what it does on the card itself. In general, they allow movement of dice within the player's window, updates to the pip values, re-rolling of the dice, or replacement of a die with one from either the round track or from the back. The first person to use a particular tool is only required to pay a single favor token. All subsequent uses of a tool card require two favor tokens. The game ends after the 10th and final round. The round tracker flips over to become a scoring tracker. As a group, each player counts their total number of points from the public objective cards and then their private objective cards. Next, they gain an additional victory point for each unspent favor token and lose a point for every open space within their window. The player with the most points wins. My advice to you when playing Sagrada is to try and fill all of the mandatory requirements as early as possible. This means putting the purple dice into the purple squares and the three pip dice into the three pip spots. As your board fills up, you're going to have placement restraints, so save the white space of your pane in order to maximize your placement options later on. Additionally, don't be afraid to use the tool cards to maximize your score. Each favor token is worth only a single point at the end of the game, so spending a favor token or two in order to earn three or more points makes sense. That's a wrap. You now know how to play Sagrada. Go forth and may the best artist win.